I'm a, I'm a big supporter of libraries in general and parks and anything that our tax dollars can go to to, to the honest, hardworking, taxpaying citizen. I think the problem right now is the two million dollar <laughs> number on a on the needs assessment is well, that probably what we're struggling with and. That seems like an awful high number it, right it's now. It's not strictly needs assessment. I think if you, I'm sorry, I misspoke on that, Ron. It would also be for the potential of buying property. And so that if if the needs assessment sh starts showing what we need, then, then we could start purchasing the property, which would take it off of the bond for building the building. So it's not, the $2 million is no so, way going to be just the so needs assessment. So how much of that is actually needs assessment? Then? I think it's about... The, the figure that I saw was about 400000 It's for site, I mean, as you see in the, in the, um, That's a little, little bit easier number to I, deal with, yeah. but honestly. I, I thought, did you, um, did you not get a copy of the, um, resolution <coughs> in your pockets? And, and in that description, it's the cost of real estate, primarily expenses related to site investigation and development, engineering and architectural expenses. Uh, I mentioned to Barb that there was one word changed and it was site investigation and development instead mm -hmm. of just site invest, site development. Do you, do you know? I think he has that one, doesn't he? Yeah, okay. Is that the resolution? This is the resolution. And so you can see that um, the, um, do you have that copy that has the project breakdown in it? I think that's project has some funding? Yeah. yeah. It, it, I guess another question I was going to ask you, Bev, and I apologize yeah. for not calling in, maybe asking these in advance, but uh, on this um, feasibility study and needs assessment consideration, um, geographically, are you just considering the city of Franklin, or are you looking at the whole county as an well, option of where this might be located? No, for this, I mean, what we'd be looking for is a Franklin branch location to, to deal with, I mean, I get weekly complaints about the crowd, overcrowding, the noise levels, the lack of public meeting space. What the needs assessment would do and the programming study would do would look at all of our facilities and look at what further things could be done to, to make them more usable or, or small expansions that might be able to be done. What would be done with your old building? Right now we have at least four if not five entities that are interested in it some of which are private, some of which are not. So we, the board at their last meeting authorized uh, Don Tribeck, who's been doing real estate work for us over the last 10 years, to start talking to those entities. And our hope would be that we would we'd sell it. Private would put it back on the tax roll. Right. I, I did an assessment of what we took off the tax rolls, and it's like $3,000. I mean, we're not, you know, it, it's a very weird shape location so we're not we did not take much land off the tax rolls. The increased operational costs for the new facility uh, will, you, will you be able to budget for those? Or? We'll have to budget and we'll have to do much like we did for Trafalgar where we just had to do it through reevaluation of what we are doing. We're outsourcing, we're, we, we, we didn't hire any new people. We actually just um, through Reevaluating and, and looking at, at staffing patterns, we were able to add staff from other locations. We'd have to do very much the same thing with this location. You know, we're, we're under the same restraints everyone is in terms of operational um, increases. So that again would be a part of the needs assessment. This might be a dumb question, but when is this paid off, this $2 million? At the end of this, we could do it in one year. We can. So this year? The end of this year, you're talking, or uh, year 2010, at 2010. the end of 2010. Okay. I mean, we would issue the bonds uh, probably, I think we were hoping towards September, and then the first payment would be due um, on like June 15th of next year, and, and the final payment would be for the end of the next year. I mean, you could extend it longer, but then you're going to pay more interest. And, and I agree with Ron. I, you know, I've been a big supporter, and I, and I know the usage of it, and I can too. My, my biggest concern and from what I'm hearing from people, whether it's the right ones I'm hearing from, that's the other thing you have to sort out, is, you know, if, if we approve this and, and you're going to use that money to purchase the property, then, then that's a go on a project. Not necessarily. Not necessarily, but it, 
intends to do that. Because Again, people are going to have a say in the project. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, it yeah. totally, and they're, you know, despite, there are a lot of people that are coming to, I mean, you know, people coming to us and thanking us for our vision with Trafalgar, that what we've helped happen in that community is we've changed a development in the type of houses that are going into it. You're getting some retail. So, I mean, we're being asked by people to look at this seriously. And there, I know there are people here tonight that would be happy to speak to this. Uh, people who, along with yourself, served on that advisory group. Um, you know, I really believe that an investment in the library is an investment in everyone's life. And it's an investment, as you saw from that article that I shared with you, oftentimes in a community, in, in furthering growth in that community. And I, and I guess another thing I haven't uh, said anything on too much is those meetings we've been having, which I thought was one this morning. It's next week, sorry. And, but I checked my email for me anyway. But anyway, that, we basically started that when we were looking at maybe downtown. Mm -hmm. And we knew what we had to do with the right building. And, and then Franklin City was looking at things. So that's where that all kind of came together. Actually, there was a grand plan at one time to make a big city <laughs> county building with a library in it. Mm -hmm didn't come from this side of the table uh, but, you know, <laughs> or that side I don't think I'm not sure but anyway but, but we those explored, we explored been, a lot of different things of whether it would work whether it wouldn't the big question was how do you fund it and who's going to do what and everything. so uh, but if it has been enlightening on, on some of the things we have to go um, space is a, is a huge problem that I've seen in, in the noise level so, uh, I know there's others that say different but that's I hear the same argument at Trafalgar, though. I hear people there that just up in arms all the time about, it. well, then you got to sort out who you're listening to sometimes. Well, and I and say they, people they're are, not the ones using it. are walking. I was going to say people are using their feet yeah. in terms of the number, the, the, yeah. the 15 to 17 percent increase in usage that we're seeing. That says something to me, you know. Okay. Uh, what? Slowly, grass. <laughs> I know the plan that you're firing. That's going to be the prairie grass. It looks to me like it's Let's not go there right now. <laughs> My but prairie anyway. will be established but in five years, I guarantee you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It takes a while. Yeah. 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 That red clover that you farmers plant just sort of takes over. Yeah. It, it could be, too, that I'm just thinking, obviously, the article in the paper on the, the board's decision to purchase land around the the library uh, gave some uh, cause to reflect on was those good purchases and at the time I know that seemed like they were based on the growth pattern that you were experiencing. If we look now at, th at this resolution with the land purchase in there, I'm good, I just get a little skittish there. I'd, I'd kind of like to see the feasibility and the needs assessment study without the land purchasing because if they combine them both and they do it and they go ahead and purchase the land it just kind of takes everybody else out of the equation the the way the board has discussed doing is that they would do it with an option they wouldn't purchase the property unless the the issue in other words the money would be there to purchase it they would not purchase it if the if the plan did not the the secondary plan to build a building did not apply I mean we've got those we were already in, in the process of looking and those are the kinds of options that we're being told we can have. We don't have to, you know, even though, again, you start talking to landowners and the prices start doubling and tripling and quadrupling. Um, that's what happened to us at Trafalgar, so we waited it out. But at least that, that would take care of where that purchasing would come from and wouldn't add to the cost of the project. But I think we totally, again, you know, the paper made it seem very simplistic that we did that in one fell swoop. It was over 10 years, oh, yeah. you know. Uh, part of it was part of the Brannigan process. Part of it was new. We had to, we had to extend the retention pond to make the retention pond. We were, re we were dealing with the water from that entire side of, of um, the old US 31, and so we had to expand the retention pond. So that was part, one of the purchases was for that. Uh, I think, you know, I, I would say, I think if you looked at the property that we took down and the sidewalks we built and the, um, what we did for that part of town might be a real argument that no one seems to want to look at. And as I said, it- Are you hinting to towards it. an improvement? <laughs> yeah, I'm hinting. <laughs> well, on the other hand, though, when, whenever you have property uh, that's in that proximity, though, 